G'day folks, Pat Callanan here. This episode, we are going to be cranking it up. Off-road, on the tracks, and with a hell of a lot of fantastic entertainment. And that's why our adventure is kicking off right here at the Gimpy Muster. Every year, 22,000 four-wheel drivers, campers, caravanners and music lovers make the pilgrimage to Gympie. They've been partying out here for 38 years now, and in that time, they've raised $15 million for charity, making the Gympie Music Muster Australia's largest and longest-running charity festival. But folks, we're just getting started. On this adventure, my good mate and colleague Wes, on assignment for Unsealed 4x4, is joining me to explore some of the best tracks near Brisbane that take us from Noosa to Byron, the back way. What an absolute slice of paradise. We travel stunningly scenic roads through rainforest and onto craggy mountain tracks that are just a tad gnarly. Then, Wes and I go head to head in a competition of gluttony. Oh, he's into it, he's already beating me. And speed. We meet up with a guy who converts classic bugs into serious off-road weapons and hit the beach on one of the world's most beautiful coastlines. We kick off our journey in the Queensland town of Gympie before exploring the surrounding Amamore State Forest. Then we'll head south through Kenilworth to Land Cruiser Mountain Park near Jimna. Next, we traverse the spectacular Glasshouse Mountains of Queensland's southern hinterland and cross into New South Wales, travelling through the Border Ranges National Park. Then we'll get back to Seven Mile Beach near Ballina, which is just out the back of Byron Bay. Many of the good folks who visit the muster are long-term re-offenders. They come back year after year, so the campsites they build are pretty damn awesome. And of course, when you come across a tent full of long-bearded look-alikes, it makes sense that they're celebrating the notorious outlaw himself, Ned Kelly. They've even written a song for the occasion. Such is life, that's what Ned Kelly said. Such is life. The event runs a competition to choose the best castle of the muster. We've been invited to visit the most dedicated participants. I don't want any trouble, buddy. <laughs> so, mate, walk me through. Yeah, so kegerator, Bluetooth, all the stereo system, and we can click from here up to the big screen. So we've got a projector out on the roof and then do a fully functioning hot instant gas hot water shower and full flushing toilet. This year, the winners are long-term muster tragics. So you guys have been coming here for a few years? This is my 19th. This is my 18th. Wow. Straight. Wow. 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 So we come up and where we go, we not camp in the bush and stuff. We come and do stuff like this and a bit of country music. And yeah, it's great. Meet a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of good people. Yeah. So it's really great. This is truly a wonderland for camping enthusiasts, full of some of the most creative setups I've come across, as well as some of the most interesting characters. Can you show me how it's done? Well, can you show me how it's done? Though? I think that was it. <laughs> Broken my arm already. And how in the world did I get talked into this one? Oh, you got this. You can't try too hard, can you? <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that really surprised me when I got to the Gimpy Music Master was the quality of the camping. You have beautiful thick grass underfoot, trees all around, plenty of shade, and big, generous campsites. But I'm pretty keen to show you mine because I think I've got it pretty well down pat. And here it is, the Lincoln LX Mark III. So we've got a pretty cracking slide out kitchen here, but what you want in your kitchen at all times is hot water. And this one has an instantaneous hot water system that pops out here. But even better, this is actually hooked up to a hot water shower that pops out the back of the camper trailer. So you don't need to line up for those hot water shower cues here at the master. Now your 12 volt is completely sorted with two 100 amp hour deep cycle batteries and they get charged up by the vehicle or by 240 volts. Now incidentally at the master there aren't too many powered campsites so we've brought along the generator to charge up our gear. Here's a little tip for you when it comes to servicing your generator. You see 
it's really important that you actually change the oil a minimum of every 12 months because when you put fresh oil in there, even if you only start it up once for 30 seconds, that oil actually starts to age and slowly degrade over time. So make sure you work out a little system for yourself, either by putting stickers on your generator of when you need to change your oil, or perhaps set a reminder in your diary. Okay, back to the festival, where you notice a lot of blokes wearing these loud shirts. They come from Trade Mutt, the work of two tradies whose aim is to start a conversation around mental health. Just one of the incredible charities here at the Muster. Another big draw card to this event is the music. Sweet, sweet country music. And this year's international special guest is Chase Rice. Something you may not know about this guy is that he used to work in the pits at NASCAR. So you used to be a NASCAR pit crew guy, and uh, when you are actually uh, tightening up those, uh, <laughs> those wheels, how many ugga duggers should you actually need to know that it's actually tight and on there? This won't work. This <laughs> won't work. Fly, man. It's not powerful enough. But yeah, I mean, it's five. We got five on five. there. Boom, 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 boom. Take it off. Boom, 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 boom. Put it on. So that was my life before music. And I'd go to work. I'd do that. I'd, I literally changed tires for a living. Um, and then I'd uh, go live in a hotel room and I'd write songs. So that was what I was doing for a while. And I had, it was a sweet job, it was a fun job, but I hated it so much, like just the way I was living and everything, that I just wanted to move to Nashville and write songs. So finally, I actually got in trouble. I got suspended for two weeks for, for getting in the fight. And that two weeks, I went to Nashville. And uh, that two weeks changed my life, because then I moved to Nashville after that. And here, I guess here I am in, in Australia singing to people, so it's, uh, it's pretty, it's, it's a crazy life, but it's fun. If you're staying here for a few days, make sure you look beyond the muster, as this region of southern Queensland is jam-packed with fun activities for both tourists and four-wheel drivers alike. Well, Wes, my friend, that concert has been a lot of fun, but I think we can grant ourselves some leave to explore. It's only a five minute drive from the muster to the Amamore State Forest, which I'm told has some really fun mid-level four-wheel driving tracks. And the landscape around this part of Australia is gorgeous. For a New South Welshman like me, this drive into a pine forest is really nice. They have gorgeous hoop pines, also known as Queensland pines. You've got to keep an eye on these roads around here because they drop off from nowhere. <laughs> that's, that's not a hill, mate. That's a cliff. <laughs> He's a bit steep. I've got no idea how deep this is, folks. It just seems to drop off. Hey, I'm getting if you're going first. <laughs> Done. Now, there is a little bit of technique to a drop-off like this, but I'm not going to just sort of hook it hard left down that hill because we're sort of giving gravity <laughs> a little bit too much preference there and we could roll the vehicle so what we're going to do is just be a little bit smarter and tackle it square on whenever you're going up or down a hill you want to go straight up or straight down in our off-road mode or this would be low range first gear in another vehicle we can actually take our feet off the pedals and let the vehicle do its work. Another really cool technique to use on super steep descents is your rear differential lock. Now I know it sounds a bit strange, do you really need traction going down a hill as opposed to up a hill? But what it does is it stabilizes that back end of your four wheel drive and in essence, you end up driving down the hill like a little bit of a tractor. You will lose a minute bit of your steering uh, but not a whole lot because obviously most of your steering is happening in the front end of your four-wheel drive. It just keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Yeah, you didn't leave your car down here, did you? <laughs> no, it's not mine. I, I don't think it's mine. It's not an 80 series by chance, is it? We're looking at a Camo 60. Oh, 
deer. I think um, what goes down must go up and um, we've got an incline and a half to come out of here, mate. I'm not going to lie, I'm afraid you're going to say that. Oh, we are a joke. <laughs> okay. Returning now to Ammermoor State Forest. <laughs> when you are going up steep inclines, you never quite know how far you are going to get up and whether you might in fact slide back down the hill. So it's a really good idea for that car at the bottom of the hill to stay there in case anything does go wrong. You might be interested to know what sort of accessories are important for steep terrain. Number one is actually really, really cheap and it is a tyre gauge. If you lower your tyre pressures, you'll essentially spread the weight of your vehicle over a much larger area and you can bite much better traction. But the tyre itself is really important as well. If you come onto really steep hills like this with road tyres that would have been fitted to your four-wheel drive from the factory, you'll find that your vehicle will dance around a lot on those rocks and pebbles and the final accessory that'll make you look like an absolute off-road legend is a cross-axle differential lock. And that pretty much means that my rear tyres are spinning at the same speed. But it doesn't always work, folks. <laughs> the locker worked. My driving technique perhaps didn't. So, I'm going to go back down the hill nice thing about these Amarox is that the hill descent control works in reverse as well. Now, if at first you don't succeed, we always do something else slightly different. Now, I'm just going for a tight, tiny bit more momentum to get me up and over here, and it has worked. All right, the last accessory that isn't a bad idea to bring along is a second vehicle to learn from your mistakes. <laughs> and Pat's giving me the... <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Loves it. Several tracks of varying difficulty weave up and down and around these hills from the Ammermoor, Imble and Jimna State Forests. All over we could spend days exploring, but right now I have a very important rendezvous back at camp. Now pretty much everyone in the world knows these guys. In excess are arguably Australia's most successful music export. So it's very impressive indeed that one of its founding members, Andrew Farris, has made the move from rock to country. And we're extremely chuffed that he's brought his entire band to join us around the campfire. Yeah, I've always been a songwriter, ever since I was a kid, really. And then during the years with the NXS guys and I love those guys and I miss them, my brothers and my mates. And I played a couple of those songs tonight because I, I co-wrote or wrote those songs and with those guys and you know, I'm proud of them. But also I wrote and played a lot of new songs tonight and performed them that are part of what my new journey is and being the new Andrew Farris, whatever that guy is. You actually wrote one of these country music songs while you were in the thick of production with NXS. Yeah. That's right, uh, Pat. The um, song Come Midnight, which is out at the moment as a single, is my first solo single. And I just, I thought, eh, I, I, I can't see my band ever doing it. I just can't see it. So I left it. And then as the years have gone on, my wife, Marlena, you know, um, she championed the song by having it as a wake up alarm. It go down, 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 down. I go, oh no. Now, there it is again, <laughs> right? So, you know, I finished the song off. I dedicate it to her, Marlena. You're not like a lot of rock gods out there that, that hang around the cities all the time. You actually, uh, you've got some uh, a block of dirt in the country. Yeah, that's right, Pat. Um, well, for 28 years now, I've, I've run a mixed farming sort of business. We, we use four-wheel drives you know, as part of our business. I mean, we love them. Yep. But I'll never forget, we went to Fraser. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we went over the Sandy Ridge with a bunch of the Danish backpackers. Oh, dear coming towards us in the sand, right? <laughs> and I'm like, this isn't gonna end well. And they're looking at me and their eyes are like that. I'm looking at them, my eyes are like that. <laughs> and somehow we missed each other. I was like, oh, 
Wow. <laughs> but we like our four-wheel driving, and Miles and I fully intend at some point <laughs> to be grey nomads. 100%. The next place we're heading to is just outside of Kenilworth. 13 kilometres by road, but you will need a four-wheel drive because we have a few water crossings ahead. And this is our first creek crossing. Gorgeous clear creek. Not too deep. So with something like this, there's no real need for a bow wave. Just kick back and enjoy the gorgeous scenery. The waterways around here are part of the Mary River system that drains the heavily wooded hills around the Imble State Forest and surrounds. What a destination is this! Gorgeous walk down here, beautiful waterholes, and then you come to the falls. This is paradise. It's only a two hour drive from Brisbane to these Balumba Falls, and there are beautiful free campsites at Cannondale National Park. Or you can choose to stay in the towns nearby. Are you, uh, you feeling peckish? Uh, yeah, didn't have much of a breakfast. I could definitely eat. What are you thinking? Well, it just so happens that the Kenilworth Bakery is famous for great coffee and <laughs> great big monster donuts. Yep, this is the home of the one kilo donut challenge. Many have tried and some have lived to tell the tale on a silver plate. Holy strawberries, Batman. We're in a jam. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's up to Wes and I to fly the flag for all proud, donut-loving four-wheel drivers. One kilo challenge, we accept. Here we go, guys. Oh, <laughs> outstanding. Three flavours so you can take a pick. Oh, thank you, Gemma. OK, so currently the quickest time is 2 minutes and 50 seconds. Youngest person to finish was 10. He did it in 25 minutes and he had a hot dog on the way home. 5% of people finish and 35% of people vomit. Enjoy. <sighs> Best of luck, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> on your marks. Get set. Go. Oh, he's into it. He's already beating me. Piece of cake. <laughs> I don't mean to count my chickens before they hatch, mate, but... You beating me? I reckon I've got you. <laughs> this is not good. There we go. Made some, no, made some really good. Back into it. Let's go! the borderline of get me a bucket, and I think that'll be coming in the next minute or so if I eat yeah. anything else. I don't I think, think it's I'm probably going not a bad idea to have the bucket. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We can share. <laughs> I'm so close. Yeah. Yes, no. so far. No, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> what is that? You'll find your dignity. <laughs> That's gold. 20 minutes now. OK. There is so little. Challenge me. I'm out of my comfort zone and into my spew zone. It's like driving your four-wheel drive up a big hill. Don't button off. It's all the momentum. It's yes. It's all about momentum. <sighs> and sugar and cream. Oh, it's... Oh, I feel like an Olympian right now. <laughs> OK, the last morsel, folks. <laughs> That's not something I ever, ever want to do again. Now it's time to roll into somewhere I haven't visited for years. Here we go. You might think I'm being offensive here by doing this, but um, it's OK, because Land Cruiser owners can't actually read, so we're all good here, guys. Not offending anyone. 
Jokes aside, Land Cruiser Mountain Park is an incredible four-wheel drive playground with 200 kilometres of specially designed four-wheel drive tracks for beginners and experienced off-roaders. Plus, it boasts 10,000 acres of wilderness camping where you can refuel by the campfire. Early next morning, Wes and I head off in the manual bi-turbo four-cylinder to take one of the more challenging hills. And why am I travelling with Wes, you ask? You are a Land Cruiser driver and it's pretty technical around here, so you, well, might, you might need a bit of instruction. Land Cruiser Mountain Park, so... <laughs> Amarok Mountain Park today, my friend. <laughs> Let's roll. Alrighty. So what's this one called, mate? This is Telecom Hill. Okay. And that's the good thing about uh, this place, is that you can just go and explore and just, you know, you spot a track off the side and off you go. Yep. Un unlike in a national park, you spot a track off the side and it says, management vehicle only, that's do it. not proceed. Oh, there's a good little one over there, mate. Do you want to have a, have a gaze at that? Oh, alrighty. So if I just nosy on down there at full lock. Yeah, yeah, mate, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember seeing some bloody big ruts in it, that's all. Yeah, don't very, worry. Very, <laughs> don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. Fake news. <laughs> Fake ruts. It's not real. It doesn't really exist. No, this next one may not be a piece of cake. <laughs> I see lots of black, <laughs> black rubber that has been uh, expelled onto the track surface. But she's proper steep. Surely is. <laughs> That's so close. <laughs> Alright, okay, so we didn't diff out terribly. I reckon a little bit of momentum will pop us over there. I think you're exactly right, mate. Shall yeah, we? Let's give it a go. A little bit of momentum, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I'm more than happy. I am more than happy. Okay, my tip, my tip is, go. Uh, is go first gear and um, give it a bit more curry right at the start. Because we're in our little train tracks here, so we'll be fine. Go. Okay. My tip didn't work. Bum <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. slid in. But I reckon that you've got. I'm like, I think you're on something here. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose so. You, I think you're on to something, <laughs> but I think you're on something. I think I was yeah. on something there too, just quietly. Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> no buttoning off. That's it. Just driving. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> the back did not behave then. The back did not behave. Oh, I've got a really sneaky suspicion I'm on the rear bar. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. How do you feel about winching? <laughs> I think we're going to be winching out here, mate. I'll get out and have a look. Never, ever. Give your keys to a Land Cruiser driver, guys. Look what they do to you. It's a disgrace. <laughs> well, that was an oops. That was a big oops. I'm not gonna lie, it's really, actually really super good to have the boss running reach rope for you. <laughs> That's a nice change. <laughs> okay, we're just about to go and I'll just show you some of the gear that we're using. So we've got a wireless remote control, which is pretty handy so that I can stay well away from the vehicle and still control the winch. If you don't have one of these, obviously you can have the driver actually uh, doing it. But I've also got a UHF CV radio so I can communicate with Wes because it is handy if you've got the vehicle's tires also pulling the vehicle up the hill as well as the winch. Just makes it a little bit easier on the system. Okay, Wes, are you ready to roll, mate? I most certainly am. It's just feeling more precarious every second. On my count. Three, two, one, and all clear winching. Okay, just accelerate a bit, Wes. Yep, perfect. 
Okay, Wes has got it to the stage where he reckons he can drive it for the rest of the way, so I'm going to disconnect the winch and let him drive on through. You're right to rock. Beautiful. All right, let's give this a rally. Let's see if I can get up the rest of this way without flipping on his lid. There she goes. Nice and easy. Don't want to look. I don't want to look. But I think it is a good. Um, I think it is a good example of there's sometimes you get in on a track and you can't actually back down. You, you get in that sideways situation, right, Wes? And, yeah. and like the only way out was forward. And um, and this is a place where, let's face it, this sort of stuff does happen. It's uh, you're challenging yourself. We're trying to push our limits this episode, aren't we, Wes? <laughs> well and truly pushed <laughs> after that. That's <laughs> never mind. She still runs. I like how you trash the trailer plug too. Yeah, yeah, good, good form. <laughs> the southern Queensland hinterland holds a new experience around every corner. Before we take on some of the great tracks around the Glasshouse Mountains, I'm catching up with Graham from Green Frog Adventures. Our main goal is to get people outside their comfort zone so that they can grow as a person and become a little bit stronger in understanding themselves. Graham served as a soldier in places such as Iraq and the Solomons. Probably the best posting I had was at um, 1RTB in Kapuka at the recruit training school there, where um, you know we take a, a young person you know, male or female who's very reliant on their parents and we mould them into a soldier. So during the 12 weeks they're with us, we get them to become more self-reliant and, you know, have a more team focus and see them push them to some new height for themselves. And the elation when they realise that they can do something they didn't think they could do is, is fantastic. But it's never too late to challenge yourself, is it? So what I'm doing here today, they call the leap of faith. Woo. Yep. This is terrifying. Oh man, this. <laughs> if you're after that extra mug of adrenaline, drop in. Literally. Graham and his partner in crime, Steve, also run adventures the best way with a 4x4. In fact, Steve started four wheel driving with the army. No better way to challenge ourselves in the glass house with two ex soldiers on their home turf. Mate, tell me about the tracks around here. If you've got something that's tricked up to the max and you wanted some severe extreme tracks, they're here. We've got big red, we've got little red. But then most of the people that do come out here, uh, you young fellas who are pea platers who are just learning out how to drive, especially off-road, you've got mums and dads that want to get out for a weekend and see a bit of the, a bit of southeast Queensland, and that's why we have tracks like this. The Glasshouse Mountains were formed over 26 million years ago. They are the remaining cause of extinct volcanoes. These 16 volcanic plugs were named by Captain James Cook, who first saw them from the coast and said they reminded him of the glass-making kilns and foundries from his native Yorkshire. Whatever their history, these tracks around the Glasshouse Mountains are a whole barrel load of fun. Love it. There we go. Come back straight a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Wait for that rear to drop in. I'm going to go my side first. There goes the rear bar. Oh. When you can't see the bottom of the hole and when you can see little bits of the tow bar sitting at the bottom. <laughs> That's when you go, okay. Ah, uh, it's just leftovers for the next block. Yeah. And rocks down for the beach. Don't suppose you've got anything tougher. Yeah. You do? That's a cheeky, Absolutely. That's a cheeky grin here, there, mate. I'm sorry. Let's go left here. <laughs> so you got your you got your easy track on one side and your and one that you can test yourself oh. on the left. <laughs> so we do. Yeah. This is um It's quite a quite an interesting little uh, little piece this one. I'm gonna I reckon I can see what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna be driving the hard line. What's the bad paddle I guarantee it. line? I guarantee it. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that I've done some pretty serious challenges over the last few days, so I think it's time that Wes stepped up and did his own. Okay, mate, so come this on up. This is classic glasshouse four-wheel driving. You've got these awesome challenges up one side, but if you want to take it easy, you've got an alternative on the other. Let's see if we can do this. That's it. Now a little bit of right down, a little bit of right, a little bit of right. That's it, perfect. You're up on the ridge. And can he go? Yes, going well, mate. Now, ooh, diffed out, mate. 
I told you to put some 35s on. <laughs> When challenging yourself and your forby, it's all about balancing line selection and clearance. Then make sure you've got a spotter to help pick the best line and prevent damage to the undercarriage and sills of the vehicle. Pretty soon. But never forget to consider the car itself. If you've got yourself the more popular mid-sized ride, you want to make sure you've got a good quality bash plate and side rails. Okay, and uh, your back wheel's going to come down soon. There it goes. Oh, nice bit of flex there, mate. Radio. You. <laughs> uh, nice one, mate. Well driven. You're not out yet, are you? Not, not yet. Here we go. There we go. Now. We're good now. <laughs> Oh, nothing, lovely. Nothing quite like a wheel lift. No. Gets the art going, gets the pulse racing. Returning now as we travel the best 4x4 tracks near Brisbane. And our next stop takes us into the Border Ranges National Park. The moment that you cross the border into the Border Ranges National Park, you are enveloped in a gorgeous canopy. Mate, this is absolutely stunning. I nearly put a bear hug on this tree, mate, and my big old arm span, I wouldn't have gone an eighth of the way around the tree. It was huge. And while it's not a, you know, particularly challenging track through it, it is a single lane track. It sees not a lot of traffic, so it's nice to have, you know, all four wheels driving in the wet. Like, the thing that blows my mind is that there's been no you know, beat up of, it, of how amazing it is, and I'm I'm really surprised. It's it's like someone has landscaped the most perfect garden. <laughs> Dotted all along these tracks are some of the most secluded rainforest campsites with great facilities, but you do need to book online, and there is a small fee. And everywhere you look, there are stunning bushwalks. Jeez, I love rainforests. They are so cool. <laughs> there's, there's this endless struggle for life. You know, you've got the, the ferns hanging off the side of the tree, the bird's nest and the vines trying to strangle stuff. And because we've got so few rainforests in Australia, they just cover this tiny little footprint that when you do get into them, it's just, you just feel like it's such a privilege to be here. These magnificent border ranges were formed back in the time of Gondwanaland, when Australia was connected to Asia. For a period of three million years, there were active volcanic eruptions creating the distinctive shapes of the area. Well, if there is a better lookout in northern New South Wales, um, I haven't seen it yet. If there's a better lookout in Australia, that is just... It's just a cracker, isn't it? So this, this is what it's like being at the edge of a volcano, mate. Thankfully, a very, very dormant one. The roads around here are drop-dead gorgeous, but you want to make sure that when you are towing, that your trailer doesn't take control of your rig. Sometimes you can find that your trailer can actually push you down some of these steep and greasy hills, and it's really cool. We've got a little uh, button just up on the dash, and that independently breaks my trailer. So whenever you're mounting those buttons, you've got to make sure that they are very, very accessible. The other reason you might want an electronic brake controller is because of trailer sway, that horrible thing when the tail wags the dog and you get this awful sway up on your trailer. Well, the only way to really stop that is to actually increase the tension between the tow vehicle and the trailer. How do you do that? Well, there's two different theories on that one. One is to hit the accelerator and make things go faster, which is often the last thing you want to do. But another option is to actually do a little bit of both. Feather the accelerator and hit your brake controller at the same time. It stretches your rig out and that, nine times out of ten, will stop your trailer sway.
The best part of travelling is often the unexpected, and crossing paths with Queenslander mechanic Dave was certainly something out of the blue. No. Oh my god, that's not that's not your average bug. <laughs> Tim Pat. How are you? I'm Dave. I'm good. good to meet you, Dave. Yeah, good to meet you. Wes. How, are you How are you, Wes? Good to see you. Oh, <laughs> mate, can I compliment you on your bug? <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? I like being different. So how much taller is it than a regular bug? Um, if you took out the account of the wheels, probably about six inches. Six inches. A um, bug with a six inch lift, folks. How good is that? <laughs> but I mean, they're 33s on the back, so you've got to go up a little bit. Oh wow! So 33s, yeah. and and what are we looking at? 30s on the front. On the front. 30s on the front. Yeah. This converted bug has had substantial modifications and is powered by an air-cooled yeah, two-liter combi engine bought out to 2.4. So that's spark in fuel, and it's running the Porsche 911 style cooling and stuff <laughs> like that. Because well, you've got to upgrade that too. Now, Dave has taken this bug up to Cape York twice. Incredible, because although he's put in a diff lock system, it's just a two-wheel drive. Did you do the Teletrack? Yep, yep, Teletrack, I went north and south. Um, and also did the old coach road out in Maytown, which I thought was great. It's, it's a lot harder than the Telegraph track, which is it, more up my sort of alley. It is, yeah, yeah. We've, we did that, yeah. yeah. You would have skirted around something like Nolan's Brook, though. No, I did all the tracks. Uh, no chicken tracks. No chicken, no chicken tracks, that was our rule. Um, my passenger was a good mate of mine, and he was probably a little bit too much encouragement in most places. <laughs> um, but we had a ball. But on the, on the best part, I made him stand in the deep spots in the creek where the crocodiles are, <laughs> just so that I knew where the deep spots were. <laughs> so yeah, it'll go most places. Wow. Oh, thanks, mate. It's still very basic 1964 Volkswagen. You don't want to be a big bloke. Oh, <laughs> it's basic, but it's gorgeous, mate. <laughs> oh, I love it. You've got air con. Yep. Yep, that's because I'm soft. <laughs> These really are one of the true <laughs> classics and the ancestor of our beloved Amarox. If you ever get sick of her, I, I, I know a new home. <laughs> I just had to jump in. It would have been rude not to. And it's got a nice ride. Oh, yeah. It really does. But, um, there's one thing we noticed up the cape. It's, um, it just beats the bumps. You don't even notice, mate. And suddenly, I was transported 50 years back in time. This trip, it's been all about the challenge, so it's time to go head-to-head -to -head in one final drag race for the ultimate victory. Here's the deal. My V6 Amarok against Wes's four-cylinder manual. Yes, I may have the more powerful vehicle, however, I will be towing a 1.8-tonne Easy Trail camper trailer. Finish line in sight. Crowd going wild. Three, two, one. Oh, a bit of slippage off the top there. No, he's coming! Damn it! <laughs> come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have left him in my dust. It doesn't matter whether you lose by an inch or a mile, losing is losing. <laughs> well no, good work, mate. You, uh, you drove that really well. The last leg of our journey takes us to near Ballina to Seven Mile Beach. The reason why we like Evan's Head is because you can drive on the beach and it will not cost you a cent, which is vastly different to those lovely island destinations off Brisbane. Okay, so I've dropped the tyre pressures on the trailer down to 12 psi. Often you can actually run your tyre pressures in your trailer a little bit lower than your four-wheel drive because it is a lighter implement. So if you want to get that tire to spread over a larger area, then you will need to drop a few more pounds generally than the tow vehicle itself. Looks like we found ourselves a sand super highway, mate. Wow, that's amazing. It's like driving on bitumen down here, probably better than some roads. I'm usually not a fan of towing anything up the beach if I can avoid it. 
but this beach has loads of hard packed sand to drive on. And we have it all to ourselves. Well, I think you'd agree that this adventure, essentially Noosa to Byron the back way, has been an absolute cracker. There are just so many amazing experiences that you can have through the forests and the rainforests and of course the beaches in this area. So many people, particularly around Brisbane, look to the coast the entire time for their adventures. But if you look over your back shoulder, you will be blown away with what you can see. I'm Pat Callanan, and until next time, keep the shiny side up. Now, next episode is something special. We've dedicated an entire show to the 12 month build of the ultimate 4x4. This is my most challenging build to date, but this tiny house on mud tyres just might blow you away. A full sized beer keg, a diesel heated tent, and enough power to run a small village. Don't miss it.